<laughs> what are you doing? Hello, hello. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name's Claire and this is Yoli. I make videos all about houseplant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learned over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And today I thought we could just go through and do some plant chores together. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm currently feeling a little bit overwhelmed with my plant care. I just feel like there is a never ending list of things to do. And so I'm gonna try and get a little bit more on top in this video. And I'm also gonna be going through and answering some of your weirdest questions, which I think should be quite fun. It'll definitely be a laugh if nothing else. So yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. So the first thing that I want to do involves a brand new wish list plant that I haven't shown you yet. I only got it a few days ago and oh my goodness, if you've watched my channel for a while and if you've watched my wish list videos, you will know that I have wanted this plant for such a long time. It is the Philodendron El Choco Red, which I have finally added to my collection and I am absolutely over the moon. Some of my planty friends basically grouped together to get me a plant when I first moved into my flat and apparently the plant that they got me didn't acclimate well and it didn't make it and so they got me they got me an El Choco Red and I saw them over the weekends and I, I got it from them then and it was the most wonderful surprise. I'm genuinely so happy with it. I think it is just stunning. And I can see that it's really, really well rooted in its cup that it's currently in, but because it's not very stable in there, it does just keep falling over. So although I don't think I'm gonna size up its pot too much and I am just gonna keep it in the mix that it's in, I'm gonna just transfer it to something with a little bit more support. I know I should also definitely think about getting it onto a moss pole, but I'm just running really low on my plant supplies at the moment. This is another thing that I need to get on top of. I've been saying for weeks now that I need to get more moss, I need to get more soil. And I don't know why I've just kind of been putting it off. I feel like, I don't know, I feel like, I don't know if it's the warm weather has just kind of clouded my mindset a bit recently, but I've just been putting loads of things to the back of the list and plant supplies has been one of them. So yeah, I'm just gonna use some Soil Ninja Monstera Philodendron mix and I'm just gonna probably just put a little bit more soil around the roots and not actually mess with the root ball that much. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna very carefully squeeze it and take it out. Oh, I kind of thought that it would all come together a little bit better and it's, it's not. Oh wow, I can see it's got really amazing roots though, which is so encouraging. I'm so glad it's healthy. Um, and I think I'm just gonna reuse the soil that's here and just put that straight back in and then add any more if I need to. I was also gonna say as well in this video, I'm really sorry if you can hear a little bit of traffic noises. I've got my windows above me open because it's so ridiculously warm in here. And I know I need to start using my microphone again, but I didn't charge it for this video. Oh, wow, it's also very bright. But yeah, as I say, I'm not breaking apart the root ball at all with this plant just because <laughs> also throwing soil everywhere. Um, but just because I don't want to mess with it too much when it's still acclimating to my home. Perfect, there we go. So I, as I say, I haven't sized up too much. I've probably just gone up the equivalent of like one or two pot sizes. Um, but again, I've used a clear transparent pot so I'll be able to just monitor the roots really well. I'll be able to kind of see what's going on with them. I really like using clear pots for that reason, but I just, I still can't believe that I own this plant. It's just stunning. And it has got a little bit of damage on this leaf here. I met my friends in the park over the weekend for one of their birthdays. And I think it just got a little bit windswept, but I have all the faith that it's gonna give me some beautiful growth once it gets going. So yeah, super excited about that. Um, and then the next one that I want to take a look at if you watched my recent hanging plants video, you'll have seen that I said my neighbours brought over a couple of plants when they recently moved out of their place just across the hall from me. And one of them was the variegated spider plant. And the other one was this peace lily, which as you can see is looking a little bit yellow. It could just be malnourished, but I have noticed that it's just potted straight into this ceramic pot. So there's obviously no drainage in here. So I just want to get it out. I want to have a look at the roots. 
probably change out its soil, I would have thought, and then get it into a nursery pot to allow it to properly drain in between waterings. Oh yeah. Okay. That lifted up surprisingly easily. Um, and I can see that although there are some really healthy roots, ah, there was a wasp literally right in my face. I don't know where it went and I don't know if you just saw that, but literally that was straight in my face. Um, but yes, the majority of the roots look okay. There are some really healthy ones in there, but there are also some very brown sludgy roots that I'm sure are just there because the plant hasn't been able to drain. So I think what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to break off as much of this old soil as possible. It also doesn't look to be the best quality soil. It looks very dense and compact and probably not what this plant needs. So I'm gonna take that off. I'm gonna have a look at the roots, maybe give them a little trim back and then think about repotting it. But as I said, I um, I have been collecting for quite a long time some of the questions that, you know how I ask you guys to send in questions for repotting chats sometimes? I tend to get quite plant focused lovely questions and i've just had a few over the last few months that have just been i don't want to say weird because like they're all valid questions but they've just been a little bit unusual so i've been kind of just saving them and i thought i would do a video and answer them at some point so these are these are some of the weirdest questions um and yeah, the first one, these are in no particular order as well. These are just the order that I wrote them down in. Um, but the first one was, have you ever had surgery? <laughs> um, and so I, I have had surgery. I, um, I had surgery on my vocal cords about, oh, when was it? When would it have been? Oh my God, about 2014, 2015. So quite a while ago now. Um, I basically, I did a, a a show at The Globe, which is this big, big kind of open air theatre in London before I went to drama school. And because I hadn't been kind of like trained how to use my voice properly, I was just kind of screaming and shouting in this production and thinking that I was kind of giving it everything and doing all the right things. And actually, little did I know, I was actually completely wrecking my vocal cords. Um, and when I got to drama school and started kind of doing voice work and stuff like that, one of my teachers, I mean, my voice sounded awful. I know I've got quite a deep voice for a woman anyway, but my voice sounded like so husky and just so unwell. Like, you know, when you've got a cold and it just sounds really like gritty and horrible. It sounded like that pretty much the whole time. And I'd completely lost the upper register in my voice. Like if I tried to go mm, like that, it would go mm and it would just like go into air um and so i went for lots of kind of like vocal scans i had to have i don't want to use the wrong word for this i think it's an endoscopy that goes down your throat i think that's the right end um i had to have a few of those where they put like a camera down my throat and they looked at my vocal cords and basically they just also very quickly side note i can see that so many of these are rotten like that it's just kind of pulling away so it's going to be quite a bit of trimming to do here um but yeah basically my vocal cords just weren't meeting properly like when you speak your vocal cords come together and meet in the middle and that's how your voice makes a sound um and that just wasn't happening for mine because i i put so much pressure on them without kind of supporting my voice in the right way um i had just just ruined them so um Oh, it's actually quite a fun story. So I had to I had to have this surgery and it meant that after the surgery, I wouldn't be able to speak for, I think it was a week and a half. I had to like write everything down um, if I needed anything. And um, at the time when I first went in for the surgery, they didn't know whether or not they would need to operate. They said that they would just get in there, they'd have a proper look um, and there was a chance that they wouldn't need to operate, but they would let me know as soon as I woke up from the anaesthetic. And so I woke up and a nurse came over to me and she was chatting away to me and asking me how I was feeling and everything. And I was just chatting back to her and she, they did operate, but she hadn't had it on her notes that I wasn't allowed to use my voice if they did. So I was just having full on conversations with this woman. And then all of a sudden the doctor came over and was like, no, 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 she shouldn't be speaking. Um, and luckily it was fine. I didn't do any lasting damage, but yeah then i had i had about a week of not being able to speak afterwards and um 
And yeah, then about, I think about six or eight months of vocal therapy after that. Um, and like, I don't know if that really counts as major surgery. It was, it, it definitely wasn't life threatening and it was something that had a fairly easy recovery period. So I don't think it was kind of anything maybe too dramatic compared to some people, but, um, but yeah, that is the only, the only surgery I've ever had, the only general anesthetic I've ever had. I did not enjoy the general anesthetic at all. I'm, I think because I'm such a control freak, I just don't like the idea of my body being out of it and, and like not having control over my body. So even like when I was first going under the anesthetic, I was I, like, without meaning to, I was fighting it so much. I remember them saying like, can you try counting back from a hundred? And by the time you get to 90, you'll be out. I think I got to 60 something because I was just like, nope, 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 nope. Um, and they had to give me more and then eventually I conked out. But yeah, I um, I did not enjoy that. But yeah, that is the only surgery that I've ever had. How about you guys? Have you <laughs> had any surgery stories that you'd like to share? Okay, so that is the majority of the soil off and I feel like most of the roots remaining are fairly healthy. Um, I've chopped them back quite a bit and I have got rid of quite a few, like even some that looked very kind of pale and healthy at the bottom were a little bit rotty at the top. So I have given them a fairly major trim back, but I think this plant should bounce back absolutely fine. Obviously it has had root issues and if it's just been in this kind of very bog standard compact soil for quite a long time, then it's probably very nutrient deprived. So I think again to be honest i mean i might just put it into some monstera philodendron mix as well because it's got kind of all the stuff that i would use for peace lilies it's got perlite it's a nice chunky mix it retains water really well so yeah i think i'm probably just going to go in with that again um i just want to figure out what pot i'm going to use i think i'm probably going to use the same ceramic pot i might just give it a rinse actually so yeah, I'm going to use the same ceramic pot as before, but I'm just going to use it as a pot cover and I'm going to put a nursery pot inside it. And I think this should probably be around about the right size. It doesn't fit perfectly into it, but I mean, it's kind of grey on grey. It doesn't bother me. I think that's going to look fine. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and repot this. I think I might give some of the foliage a little bit of a trim back as well, but I'm going to pot it up first and then I'll do that. Um, but the next weird question was, what's an irrational fear that you have? An irrational fear? I feel like I've spoken before about, I don't know if it's irrational, but fears such as snakes and stuff like that. Um, although I feel like that's fairly rational. Oh, okay. I've got, this is definitely an irrational fear, but I, I really get freaked out by group chats and I don't know why. Like, whatsapp group chats i've said before about instagram messages stuff like that i just i sometimes find messages a little bit overwhelming and um and yeah like even when i've got group like group chats with like really close friends i tend to much prefer messaging them individually i know group chats are practical for like arranging dates if you're going to do something or anything like that but i just am personally not a fan and i i don't know why um yeah it just feels a bit much for me <laughs> and and it just stresses me out and it makes me feel i don't know i feel like i can't keep on top of any of it where if it's just me in a conversation with one other person then it feels like a conversation in a group chat just i guess it's kind of the same as real life like i'm definitely unless i know people really well i'm definitely better one-on-one -on -one with people than i am in huge big groups of people because i can just find it a bit overwhelming um I do come from quite a small family and I always think that maybe that's part of the reason why, but yeah, I don't know if you'd really call that a fear, but it's something that I just really don't like and I can find it a little bit scary for whatever reason. So yeah, weird irrational fear. I know I've said before that I used to be really scared of fire. I'm pretty sure I told the story in one of my reporting chats where, um, there was an escape rope installed in, installed in my room because I was so scared of fire when I was younger. Um, but again, I think that's fairly rational. Yeah, I, th I think, I, I think the, the group chats thing would probably be what I'd say for an irrational fit, even though, as I say, it's not, 
exactly maybe a fear. What about you lot? Do you have any weird irrational fears? I'm sure there's lots that I'm just not thinking of that I have got, but yeah, do let me know in the comments below what, what your weirdest irrational fear is. Cool, okay, so that is the Peace Lily repotted. I'll give it a good water after I finish filming this video, but for now, I'm just going to give certain bits a little trim back so I can see there's lots of kind of dead growth. There's a point where I can see that it flowered here and it just hasn't been trimmed back. I'm just going to hopefully get it looking a little bit healthier. And the next question was best concert or festival that you've been to? I know this isn't a particularly weird question, but it just went in with this bunch because it wasn't plant related. Um, that's a really tricky one. Uh, I haven't I haven't been to a festival in a while. Like I haven't been to a festival in a couple of years. I used to love going to festivals. Um, but I would say probably my favorite festival was a festival called Noisily. And it's quite a small festival. Like it's not, I guess it's not kind of like mainstream. I haven't really been to many of the like, I haven't been to Glastonbury or anything like that. And I'm not quite sure if that would be my sort of thing, but um, Noisley Festival is basically just like, how would you explain Noisley? It's kind of just like a gorgeous hippie-ish festival, like it's very alternative and I, I think only about two, three thousand people go, it's really quite small in the grand scheme of things. Everybody is just so lovely and I was a little bit nervous because I didn't know that many people going and um, you know how sometimes, again, like going back to what I just said about going into big groups of people that you don't know, it can just, you can just feel like a little bit of an outsider and, and with Noisley, everybody was just so welcoming and like they'd see you and they'd be like, hey, you having a good time? And it just, I don't know, I felt like I really found my people there and there were so many different stages with lots of different music, you could kind of just... Oh, it, it was beautiful. It was like in the middle of summertime. It was in the middle of the woods. You could take yourself off from little woodland walks. Um, I feel like magical is the right way to describe noisily. And I would love to go back to it. I'm not going this year, sadly. I would love to be going. Um, but yeah, noisily, it was, it was actually, I would say, one of the, one of the best, like, experiences one of the best yeah why not one of the best experiences of my life it was it felt like I went on this beautiful little holiday and yeah I just connected with so many lovely people and I just couldn't rave about it enough honestly it was it was fabulous and I'm definitely going to try it and go back to it next year so yeah that was definitely my favorite festival um ow I just need my cupboard uh, and in regards to favourite concert, again, I'm trying to think. Um, okay, I have two and I don't know if that's cheating, but my first favourite was a guy called Matt Corby, who I am absolutely obsessed with. I think he's just amazing. I saw him in Camden about, probably about six years ago now, and it was, he was just outstanding. Like you know when you hear someone on like on a cd or on itunes or spotify or anything like that and then you hear them in real life and you're like oh my god they are just as fantastic i thought he was just amazing and i just had a really good night so i feel like that was that that was definitely a great concert um, and the other one is one that i went to see when i was about 18 which is over 10 years ago now um i went to see paramore in, in fact over over that oh god i was about 16 so a long time ago, um, I went to see Paramore in concert at the O2, and I know Paramore are kind of very kind of, I don't know, like how would you describe them, like rocky punk, and a lot of their stuff is quite, is quite kind of heavy, and I remember they just sat on a sofa and they did kind of most of their stuff acoustic, and it was just beautiful, they did, they did the most amazing gig, and I just, I, I loved them before, but I kind of loved them even more afterwards. Um, and I went with a lot of my, at the time, school friends, and we just had, a really a really wonderful time so yeah i would say those are probably my top my top two concerts if i had to say but yeah right okay i've given the peace lily a bit of a chop back and it's had a repot and although it's still looking a little bit faded i think 
I think probably it should kind of sort itself out by itself now. If it's not looking a bit greener and healthier in the next couple of weeks, then I'll reevaluate and maybe treat it kind of like, I don't know, get, get, get the roots out again and give them a bigger chop back. If I need to do a hydrogen peroxide treatment, but I wouldn't have thought that I would need to. Um, I am also going away for five days at the end of this week and that's going to mean leaving leaving all of my plants shut up in my flat and as I've already said it's so warm in here at the moment and I have actually ordered like a little mini aircon unit that's arriving today. I kind of hoped it would arrive before I filmed this video because it's very warm but I've ordered one for now and I'm going to just test it in this room and see how it works and if it's good then I'm going to order another one for my bedroom before I go away. Um, because everything is drying out so quickly and I'm just like every single morning I've been getting up at like four or five o'clock going around with my watering can watering plants some plants have been watering like two three times a week and it yeah it's just very very warm and I know some of you were saying like other people in the UK were saying that's weird because their places aren't that warm and I think it's just for me I think it's because I'm on the top floor here I do like my flat gets full sun from either one window or another pretty much all day round at the moment and also because I live in a timber building it just kind of contains the heat a lot um like I'm looking at my cabinet now and it's 32 degrees celsius in my cabinet and I would have thought it would probably be in like the high 20s in here uh which is very hot <laughs> so um so yeah, but yeah, I have faith that this one will be fine. I'm going to put it to one side and give it a water after this. And then I'm going to look at what is next on my list. So one of the things that I really want to do before I go away is trellis my Hoya latifolia Sarawak because as I said in one of my recent update videos, I'm super, super excited about this. It started putting out this huge big tendril and I know that once it's trellised, it will probably start to give me some lovely leaves. I don't know if they're going to be quite as amazing and big as these ones, but I just want to try and bring out the best in this plant. and. It's kind of difficult to know how to trellis this plant because at the moment it's just stood kind of upright on a bamboo cane and this is the bit that needs to kind of be wound. And I did think about maybe kind of getting some wire and creating like a circular trellis coming off it, but I'm just working with what I've got right now. And I think what I'm probably gonna do is just tie another little bit of, I don't know if it's bamboo cane, it's just kind of a cane of some sort just attach that to the current one and just encourage it to climb that way um hoyas do like to tendril anti-clockwise so i think if i wrap it anti-clockwise around this new section that should just help to encourage some new growth and then maybe when i get back from my time away i might see some lovely new leaves on it i don't know it's better than nothing for the time being and if i do decide to reevaluate when i get back then it's not the worst thing in the world but it feels like it feels like the best thing to do and also then I can hopefully just keep it growing relatively upwards which I think I'd like to do for this plant so so yeah I also don't know where my gardening string is I've got a load of kind of twine stuff that I usually use and I think it's probably in my cupboard of chaos of plant stuff which is so disorganized so I'm just going to be using a little bit of wool for the time being um again I can swap it out should I want to God, I'm so sorry about this traffic I know it's really loud but yeah this is what I'm going to use for the time being um, and the next weird question <laughs> the next weird question was what kind of owl would you be um I don't know if this is in reference to Harry Potter or if this is just someone that really likes owls um I mean I don't know that many types of owls to be completely honest I would say I probably be a barn owl just because I used to read a storybook when I was very little all about an owl called Plop and he was a barn owl so I think I would be a barn owl. The next question was what have plants taught you and I guess this isn't exactly a weird question I don't really know why I put it in this section um it actually sounds like quite a coherent and profound question um what have plants taught me? I actually feel like plants have taught me a lot. Um, I feel like they've taught me how to be still a lot better. Um, I think they've taught me that I need to take time for myself more. 
Uh, I've kind of briefly spoken in other videos before about um, how I feel, like how amazing plant care has been for my mental health. Um, I used to have some, especially when I was younger, some very, very unhealthy coping mechanisms. And um, I really do wish that I'd known about plant care sooner because it, I feel like it ticks all the boxes that other not so healthy things were doing for me in the past. And I think maybe if I'd have plant care sooner, then I could have avoided some some dips in my life. But, um, but yeah, I think, I think plant care has kind of taught me in a roundabout way to just kind of embrace myself a little bit, a little bit more and just like, I don't know, not feel the need to um, conform to do the cool things, to just do what makes me happy. And plant care, I mean, to this day, even like I, I still make time, although YouTube is now my full time job, I still make time pretty much every single day to do off camera plant stuff because it is kind of like, I was gonna say my crutch, it is my thing that I very much build into my routine and make sure that it stays a hobby as well as a job because I think sometimes when you're doing something, I've also got birds nesting by my window, if you can hear that. Um, but I think sometimes when you start doing something that you really enjoy and it does become your livelihood, it's very easy to just kind of make everything very pressured and like, oh, well, you must just do it because you have to, not do it because you love it. And it's something that I'm almost quite protective over. Like, I, I want to make sure that it is, it, like, primarily my hobby over anything. Like, making videos is fantastic, but if I had the choice about right, you can only make videos for a living or you can do plant care. I, I would choose plant care like 100%, um, as much as I love making content and making content on plants. And um, and I guess this kind of feeds into it as well. And I know as well, actually me and Emma, um, over on our joint channel, we recently made a video about uh, kind of like starting a YouTube channel, how we got started, tips and tricks and things like that, um, things we wish we'd know sooner. And one of the things that we both said is how much confidence getting on YouTube has given us. And obviously that kind of feeds into plants because I think speaking about my passion with other people online and being able to actually talk about that and share share my love of it has really kind of brought me, brought me into myself a little bit more. It's given me so much more confidence. Like it's unbelievable. I was so nervous when I started on YouTube. And although I still have days where I doubt myself and I don't feel like what I'm doing is very good or like people won't want to watch it or I'm just waffling a little bit like I feel like I'm doing now. Um, it does just really kind of give me a give me a sense of self and kind of I guess validation is a word that ow I just knocked my knee again. Um, is is maybe a weird word to use and I don't really know if I like using it in this context but. I actually kind of felt that even before before I took to YouTube, just took to YouTube, um, when I was just chatting to people in the plant community, I think just the feeling of validation comes a lot of the time from just knowing that when you talk with other people that also have a shared interest in something, you might be able to offer an experience or a piece of knowledge that they need and they will be able to do the same to you and it's just... I don't know, because it's a very like practical learn as you go kind of thing, like there's book smart and then there's like practical smart. And I feel like with plants, you can do a lot of reading up on like things online, but there's actually the going out and kind of experiencing it and being like, oh God, this plant's going wrong. What's going on? Let's figure out how to deal with it. And that in itself, for me anyway, just kind of gives me a sense of achievement and a sense of pride. So. So yeah, I feel like plants have definitely, I mean, 100%, I'm saying it very lightly, but like plants have 100% changed my life for the better. Um, and they continue to teach me things about myself. And on like, even now on the days where I am feeling, I don't know, I just kind of have like zone out days sometimes where I would just find myself wanting to do nothing, but just sit and like scroll on my phone or, like the thought of doing anything at all feels really overwhelming and on those days a lot of the time if i just make myself start some form of plant care if i just make myself start some watering or some pruning or something like that it will just totally bring me out of my head and back into my body and after that i will feel so much more able to actually go in 
and tackle the tasks that previously seemed so overwhelming. It doesn't always happen like that, it doesn't always work, but if anything's gonna get me out of that headspace, a lot of the time for me, it is plants. So, so yeah, they, um, they're they amazing. <laughs> As I say, I don't really know why I put that question um, in the weird questions, because I actually really like that question. And yeah, if any of you have any things that plants have taught you about yourself then please do let me know because I think that's actually a really lovely question um but yeah right okay so I've very badly attached this this cane to um to the other cane so it's just looking like that at the moment um, and I'm just going to wind the tendril now round the new cane as I say I am going to work in an anti-clockwise direction just because that is how they naturally tendril and although oh for goodness sake it's not quite tall enough, I thought it would be. Damn it. Um, although at first I will probably need to tie it in place because Hoyas do naturally tendril anti-clockwise, it will just start to do it itself after that. Okay, it's coming off that new bit a little bit, but this, as I say, is probably just gonna be a temporary measure. Just at least for while I'm away, I don't really actually need to tie it. It is just kind of staying like that pretty easily. So maybe, I won't tie it in place. Maybe I will just leave it like that. I'm gonna leave it like that for the time being. If it starts to come off, then I will just put a little bit of string at the top to just kind of hold it in place. But I do hope that now it might start to produce some leaves because there's lots of lovely points there and I can see teeny tiny leaves starting to form. Um, but a lot of the time they can stay teeny tiny for ages if you don't actually give the Hoya something to climb. So, yep. Fingers crossed, I would love it to be lovely and full and bushy and give me lots of beautiful leaves like this because they are just so stunning and I don't know what I would do with myself if it kept growing like this. I would just be beside myself with joy. So let's keep everything crossed for that. Um, oh, and another thing that I was going to do in this video, this video, as you might have worked out, doesn't really have much order or structure to it, but a lot of you have been asking about updates in my cabinet. Someone said recently that I haven't done a kind of updates on my cabinet since I set it up. So I will, I'll take you over to my cabinet for a moment and I will give you some updates, see what's going on in there, see if there's anything that I need to deal with in there because there inevitably is, and then I can bring it back across and we can deal with it. So coming over to, oh, in fact, hello, Yuli, um, Cupboard of Chaos. This is what I always bang on about. So this cupboard contains pretty much all of my planty things that I need on a very regular basis. I need to get some more shelves in here and get it organized. But at the moment, it just is pretty much like a pile of planty stuff that I'm not, uh, what's the word of, I'm not proud of. But at the moment, I just pull it out every day when I need it get what I need out and then it gets shoved back in at the end of the day. Uh, so yeah, that's something it needs doing. Uh, here's a very hot dog. Hello, baby. <laughs> Hello. Um, but the cabinet. So yeah, this is what it's currently looking like. I know there are some issues going on in my cabinet at the moment. It is very warm in here. Um, if you look at the dial at the top, you can see it's 30 degrees with 52% humidity, which is fairly low compared to how it usually is. Again, I think it is just because the temperature is so high. Um, and I have struggled with pests in my cabinet in the last few months. As you can see, I've got loads of predatory mite sachets in here. I've got, I think it's Amblesius cucumeris, which are for thrips at the back there. And then I've got all oh, ones that I can't remember the exact name of, but these ones have a spider mites and I've got them all along there because I did find some spider mites in my cabinet. Um, and as you can see, I've got quite a lot of stuff into pond and it does seem to be doing really good things. My little alocasia regal shields that I got recently, um, that one I put into pond and it's developed the most incredible root system and it's growing like a weed for me at the moment. So I'm really, really happy with how it's getting on. Most things in here, I would say are doing okay. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna leave the doors in there open for a little bit because I can feel the heat coming out of there. Um, my Begonia thurstonii, as you can see, has lost most of its leaves, which is really, really sad. Again, I think it's probably heat related. In fact, I should probably take it out of the cabinet. Oh, put it there with the rest of the dead leaves. Um, but yeah, everything else on that shelf is doing okay. 
And I could say the same for down here. I mean, there's not a huge amount going on in here at the moment. I don't think that I haven't already updated you on. Oh, my um, uh, Anthurium Regal is finally giving me another new leaf, which is very exciting. So I'm hoping that that one will come out a little bit less deformed than the last leaf. Um, I still love that leaf, but I was just really excited for it to be kind of like big and glossy and beautiful and it just went a little bit wrong. Um, also the little alocasias that I got at the plant swap, again still not entirely sure what all of them are, but I think this one here, looking at it, I, I was wondering if it was a zebrina at first, but I think it's probably, oh what's the name of it? Um, a, maybe a sarian? Is that what I'm thinking of? I'll put the name on the screen. Um, but yeah, as it's starting to develop its leaves, I feel like it looks quite, oh, I'm pretty sure that's just a beneficial insect, but I can see a little creepy coolie there. I'm pretty sure that's one of um, the spider mite sachet ones. I'm going to say it is because it's right there next to it, but it does look a little bit like a spider mite. Um, but yeah, that one's obviously giving me lovely growth. Others in there are currently sprouting, so I'm excited to see what they grow into. Um, but yes, apart from that, everything is just kind of ticking on by in my cabinet. I would say there's not any huge major updates. I do see this one that needs some attention. This one's drying out so quickly. This is my Anthurium, one of my silver blushes. So I'm going to put this over on the side and we can deal with that one next. Also, I was thinking it might be an idea actually to chop up the top section of my begonia thurstonia and maybe just pop it in some water or something while i'm away um because at least then it can start to root because the begonia looking glass that i propped in water fairly recently has not only given me beautiful growth since i put it into water it's given me the most amazing roots and again this one probably is ready to be potted um so yeah i might even just pop some sections of the thurstonia in with that and just see how it does there's no harm in doing that so yeah i will put that there and do that in a moment but those are kind of the main cabinet updates in there i have got some stuff going on in my bedroom cabinet but it's not particularly exciting um i've got oh in fact this one has responded amazingly to pond this is my peperomia obtusifolia which has been the slowest grower in the world but since i got it into pond it has grown like crazy and it's currently putting out a new leaf. So I'm really happy about that. Um, but apart from that, the other thing that I'm wondering about, that was a very loud bike. The other thing that I'm wondering about now is my uh, Monstera Dubia section. Obviously it's yet again coming off its plank and I need to think about what I'm gonna do with that. I think it's probably gonna be the case of doing what I did with it before I chopped it the last time and putting a moss pole extension on the back which again, I should probably do in the next few days before I go away. As I say, never ending list of things to do, but I'm glad it's growing well for me and I'm glad that it's giving me lovely growth. The other section of it down here is also doing it beautifully um, along with my Chop and Extend on my Philodendron Splendid. Yeah, just look at that. I'm so proud of that section of my Monstera Dubia. I love it more than anything. But yes, right, okay, let's not turn this into a full updates video. I'm getting so distracted and I need to carry on with planty things. Uh, so yeah, let's tackle these next ones. So the Anthurium Silver Blush, I'm pretty sure is just doing this because it's it's got too hot in my cabinet and I have not stayed as on top of watering as I should. And to be honest, I, I'm not, I'm gonna have a look at its root system, but from what I can see at the bottom, it has got a pretty hefty root system for the amount of soil that it's in. So I think maybe it's just drying out. Yeah, in fact, you can see just from looking at that, look at those roots. I think that's the reason it's drying out so quickly. And I'm gonna put it into pond, I think. I have put a few anthuriums in pond recently and they've done really well. And I feel like it might just make my plant care maintenance for this plant at this time of year a little bit less i think i think the plant will just be happier and i won't have to do as much to it and especially as i say preparing for going away for five days i think it's probably a good thing to do um i'm also just gonna take off that leaf because obviously it's not gonna bounce back 
Um, oh, it's very sad actually now looking at the section of plant. It almost doesn't look like a plant. It's got a very little leaf just there, but again, you never know. Maybe it will start doing something amazing for me while I'm away and I will be able to come back to something very exciting. Because um, I'm going to, I, can't, I don't think I said this, I'm going to Pembrokeshire for five days with Ross. It's his birthday and um, we found a lovely Airbnb there and we're just going to go and have a little explore, go to the beach, just do some fun things, play some games. I'm really excited. I think it'll be lovely, especially if the weather stays like this. It's going to be like being abroad. It's just ridiculous at the moment. So although I will be a little bit worried about my plants back at home, I... I think it will be just the best time to get away. So yeah, I will be putting lots of measures in place before I go, like wrapping moss poles and stuff like that and making sure that everything is as good as it can be. And then there will be a hopefully very positive plant updates video when I get home, but I'll give you some updates anyway and let you know how everything's got on. And the good thing with this is because the soil was quite dry um, and obviously it's got like the most amazing roots ever. It was quite easy to get the soil off and I don't actually think I need to do much more to that before putting it into pond. Sometimes before you make the transfer to pond, you do just need to kind of give the roots a bit of, not a scrub, but like get them under the tap and get all the soil off because it can just make the roots more prone to rotting if there's lots of soil on there. But I think I'm pretty happy with that. Um, and what I'm thinking actually is I'm thinking I'll probably, reuse the same pot that it was in and for its reservoir tray I think I'm just going to use a drainage tray because that's usually about the amount that I would fill it to anyway and I feel like that way I'll just be able to monitor the water reservoir quite well um so yeah I'm just going to give that pot a rinse out to just get the soil off and then I'm gonna pot it in a pond cool um, and the next weird question was do you like American candy uh, and I, I, I mean, I'm not a massive, I love chocolate, but I'm not a massive fan of sweets on the whole. Like, I don't mind them. I could just happily go without. Uh, I don't know if I've tried that much American candy. Oh, Jolly Ranchers. I really like the watermelon flavoured Jolly Ranchers. Um, but no, apart from that, I don't really think I've, I've tried much. Um, and also part of me is thinking, Sorry, I know I'm drifting off subject, but I'm kind of thinking I might need to pot size up. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go one size up with this pot just to give the roots a little bit more space. Yeah, I think that that one feels like a better option. Um, but no, American candy. As I say, I just don't think I'm that familiar with it. I haven't spent a huge amount of time in the States. I don't think I've ever imported American sweets that much. I'm like aware of Hershey's and stuff like that. Personally, I think I prefer Cadbury's. Controversial, I don't know. Um, I know some YouTubers do do like trying American sweets and trying this and trying that. Uh, if you want to see a repot, I've never done anything like this before, but if you want to see a repot and chat at some point and I can try some American stuff or sweets from other countries then maybe that could be a thing i don't know let me know if you'd like to see that um but no currently i would say what i've tried i think i like but i don't know it that well okay cool so that is what it's looking and i'll just fill the water reservoir so that you can see my plans for it Oh, I have to be very careful not to spill it now, but I've just put water at the bottom there and I'll just be able to monitor that tray and see how it's doing and just keep it regularly filled. And I think that should be the right amount for that kind of sized plant pot. So I really hope this plant bounces back. I, I feel like it will. It seems to be a fairly hardy anthurium. As I say, it is just one that I don't think I've taken the best care of in the warmer weather, but I have faith that it will be fine now. So I'll pop it back in the cabinet and, and yeah, I hope that in the next week or two, maybe I'll start seeing some new growth because it has got that teeny tiny little leaf. So we will see, I'll keep you updated. Um, but apart from that, I obviously with the Begonia Thurstonii, I did say anyway that this one was gonna be a nightmare to actually 
get out of moss because it's got so many roots so i kind of feel like maybe this was a blessing in disguise the fact that it's lost all its leaves maybe i should just chop it up and start again um yeah i'm just gonna take some cuttings of it uh and then i'll probably leave them to callus just for a little bit just because it is a very like fleshy wet begonia like it's very i don't know what the right word for it is like very sappy and i feel like it might be quite prone to rot so i'm just going to take the cuttings and then i will probably just propagate them in water as i say in the same way as i have done with this one and i'll probably just put them in together and that will be one less thing for me to worry about again while i'm away because i know that it will likely be doing better than it would be if it was in moss in the cabinet and it won't dry out either and the bottom section that I've got here has actually already got some little roots on it from being in the moss. But I'm just going to, again, put that into water and I'll let you know what it does. I really hope it does bounce back. I don't see why it wouldn't, to be honest. But yeah, I'll, I'll let you know when I'm home and everything has hopefully gone to plan. And the next thing that I mentioned in one of my plant updates recently is that my Kencha palm has severely dried out and pretty much died back which is very sad and it really just isn't looking good so I'm gonna give it a complete chop back I know we spoke about maybe getting this one into pond as well I'm gonna have a look at the roots but realistically I don't think I've got enough pond to be able to do that right now so I'm just I don't really know what I'm gonna do with it yet I'm just gonna chop it all back look at the roots and then make a decision on it um and in the meantime, keep my spirits high by continuing with these weird and wonderful questions. Uh, the next one being, are you a messy or a tidy person? Uh, well, I mean, I've just shown you my cupboard of chaos and my living room currently, so I wouldn't say I'm tidy. Um, I very much think, oh, this is very sad having to do this. Um, I very much think that I am both, like, I like obsessively one way or the other um I know I've mentioned this on Patreon before but I um when I was at drama school and I was going for dyslexia tests I at the time it also came back that I had ADHD and at that point I think just because I was purely wanting just a dyslexia um diagnosis so that I could get extra time on my lines and I, it did come back that I was dyslexic um I kind of didn't really do any research into what ADHD was, um, whether or not there were things that might actually be able to help me with ADHD. Um, but literally in the last kind of few months, I've I've just been doing a little bit more, more reading into it and I've been like, oh my God, this makes so much sense. I don't know why I didn't look into this sooner. Um, so I don't know if this feeds into ADHD or if it is just my personality, but I tend to be on the whole fairly untidy and not like messy like I would say organized mess I usually know where things are but if somebody else was to walk into the space they'd probably go oh my god like what's going on in here there's soil and plant stuff everywhere and um but then sometimes if I decide that I'm gonna get on top of things I will do like a ridiculously like deep clean doesn't even begin to explain it I will spend like days organizing and tidying and getting things to such a good point where they look amazing like literally immaculate and then I will be so precious for probably a few days about keeping the space like that and if somebody else comes in and puts their shoes somewhere I'll be like oh no I don't like that um but then I will usually kind of upset that routine myself and I'll have a day where I'll do a repot and I'll just leave stuff like this and then I'll be like oh well I'll, I'll start it again another day so I think I'm either obsessively neat and clean well I mean I, I would like to say I'm always clean but obsessively neat and tidy or very very messy I don't think I'm one or the other um I think I am the perfect mix of two personally um also I was just gonna say with these two stems these ones obviously haven't yellowed but the foliage at the top has gone very dry so I am just going to chop them back. I am just going to chop the whole thing back um, just because I think it's probably going to give it the best chance. I don't want the plant to be trying to fight to save sections that aren't going to bounce back. Uh, nah. 
this does just, I mean, as I say, Kentia palms, palms in general can be the easiest, lowest maintenance plants in the entire world. Um, but they don't deal with heat well and they don't deal with completely drying out very well at all. And I went away recently and obviously it's been very warm. I came back, it was bone dry and I could just see lots of the stems had started to yellow. And uh, yeah, it's just kind of been downhill from there. So I'm going to have a look at the roots and I'm going to see what's going on and then figure out what my next move is going to be. But the next weird and wonderful question is, are you related to Daisy Ridley? No, I am not at all. Um, I am aware that we look a little bit similar. I get that comment on my YouTube channel all the time. And well, so I'm very flattered. Um, no, we are in no way related to each other. Oh, okay, I see some very dead looking roots here. So I'm gonna have to do some major chopping, I think. Uh, but yeah, I always get comments like, Daisy Ridley does plant care and stuff like that. And it's, yeah, it's quite, it's quite funny, but it's like, I've heard it so many times now. I'm just like, ha ha ha. Um, the funny thing with that is that actually when, um, in fact, I'll just show you the roots. There you go. You can see there's some healthy ones, but there's a lot of dead ones as well, similar to the peace lily. Um, but when I was doing my foundation course at drama school and they were just casting the new Star Wars film, I remember someone coming into school one day and being like, oh my God, they cast your doppelganger as, as the main part in Star Wars. And you know, often like if somebody says that you look like someone and you, you kind of go, what really? I really don't see it. I remember looking at the photo that they released of her and being like, oh God, I actually do see it. <laughs> and I don't mean that in like a bitter way or anything, but I think at that point, like obviously I was training as an actor, I would have loved to get the role of Ray. I think it's a really freaking awesome role. Um, and I was just a little bit disheartened because I was like, oh great, there's already another one of me out there. The next question was, what's the most spontaneous thing you've done? Um, whenever I think of spontaneous things, I feel like they all involve my friend Beck, who's the one that took me on my mystery road trip last year. If you haven't seen that video, I did make a video on that when I left my plants for a week and went on this mystery road trip that turned out to be a mystery holiday that my friend had organized. I feel like all of my spontaneous stories involve that friend, <laughs> involve Beck. Um, so there was obviously that, but I mean, that was kind of out of my control. Um, I went to Egypt with her recently and we were on reserve standby flights. We had no idea where we were going. We didn't know if, we, if we'd even end up going anywhere. Um, we just kind of were waiting to get on a flight and book accommodation as we were on the runway. And I guess that was pretty spontaneous. Um, I'm also, again, involving Beck, have been on holiday with her before. And we, we I think we went for like, a week to Greece once and um, we're having such a lovely time that we were just like, should we just miss our flight home tomorrow? So we just randomly decided to miss our flight. Oh my goodness, this is actually a fun story. So, <laughs> so we missed our flight home, but because our accommodation had only been paid for up until the day that we flew, we didn't have anywhere to stay. Um, and we knew like we've got some kind of family, family friends, like adopted family friends. We've known them for years, but we're not actually related to them. Um, but they owned some apartments out there and they couldn't put us up. They were like, we're completely full. So we basically just said, okay, well, would you mind if we slept on the sun lounges outside? And they were like, okay, no, that's fine. So, um, so yeah, we just took our towels and went out by the pool and had, oh my God, the coldest night's sleep, I think, of our lives. Um, just slept by the pool on sun lounges and, uh, and yeah, we eventually did manage to get accommodation, but for a little while it was a bit touch and go, but we did get an extra week in Greece for very little money. So that was fun. <laughs> but I feel like, yeah, I feel like, as I say, all of my spontaneous things probably involve Beck. I don't know if I'm that much of a spontaneous person outside of my relationship with Beck. I don't know, am I? I don't think I am. I mean, maybe I am if I've like got everything done that I need to get done, but I'm usually just, I, I like to have my plans in advance. I like to know what's going on. I like to know what I'm doing. Um, and usually stuff like that would scare me a bit, but, but she's very good at doing stuff like that. So I think it kind of brings that out in me. Okay, so what I'm thinking with this plant, 
I think what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to give the roots quite a big prune back because there are quite a lot of roots. They're not necessarily in the healthiest states. They do look very dry. Roots pruning can encourage new growth in the plant. So I think not being too precious about it is probably not a bad idea. So I'm going to just give them a really, really good prune back. And then I think I'm going to pot it in new soil in a slightly smaller pot. Um, and then think about how I can keep humidity up for it while I'm away. And hopefully it bounces back. I do hope so. One of you said, would you come to New York? Oh my God, I would love to go to New York. It's somewhere that I've never been and it's 100% on my list of places to go. Um, yeah, like I don't have much else to say about that apart from I would love to go to New York. It is a bucket list destination of mine and I think the thing that puts me off a little bit is how expensive it seems to be. Um, because I have considered actually booking tickets to New York before, but I think getting like getting there in the first place is very expensive. Accommodation, again, within my budget currently looks to be very expensive. So I think that's been the reason why I haven't done it so far. There is no other reason. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I hope that at some point in my life, in the not too distant future, I will be able to come to New York. Okay, so that's what we're looking like. There is still some living life, living life. There's some greenery within the bits that I've chopped back. There's one section here that just looks completely woody and dead. So I don't have any faith in that one bouncing back, but the others I think should be fine. And I could actually take that bit out I could take that bit out but the roots are so entwined I think just for the next week or so I am going to leave it you never know there might be stuff that I'm not seeing but I don't think that there is so I'm just going to transfer it to a much smaller pot size is this too small no I think I'm going to keep it on the small side so that I can kind of monitor it a little bit better and the new the new roots the pruned roots won't be overwhelmed with too much um but yeah and then i think what i'll probably do to keep the humidity high is just cover it in cling film while i'm away i have brought palms back from kind of near death before but i don't know if this one is perhaps too far gone as i say they just really don't like to completely dry out for this long and also i think the dramatic change in heat has just not done good things for this plant Cool. So that's what it's looking like. Uh, and as I say, what I think I'll probably do in the time that I'm away is I'll probably put a drainage tray underneath it and leave it with just a little bit of water in it. It won't actually touch the roots because the roots are kind of up here. But again, if I cover that all in cling film, it just helps keep the humidity levels really high, make sure that it doesn't dry out again. And I think that's going to offer it the best possible chance at bouncing back. I'll keep you updated with it and I really hope it does because I love this plant so much. But yeah, for now, that's what it's looking like and we'll see how it goes. And then finally, one that I've been looking at and wanting to deal with for a while is my Philodendron Golden Dragon. And this is the one that I got in my import last year or the year before. I want to say from either Arrowwood Market or Green Space ID, one of the two. And I loved it when I first got it. And then I kind of fell out of love with it. I chopped it up. I gave loads of cuttings away. I just wasn't that in love with the plant. And my plan was to let it grow a little bit and then give it away as a full plant to someone. And as it started to grow, I've, I've basically just completely fallen in love with it again. And I really love how it's growing for me now and would not consider getting rid of it. But it's in a very small pot for what I think the root system on this plant now is. I also have been thinking about getting it onto a moss pole, but because the internodal spacing is quite small and its aerial roots do seem to kind of just be tucking themselves down into the soil, I haven't bothered. Um, but I'm thinking that I will probably get this one into pond as well, because I think it would do very well in there. Oh yeah, wow, its roots are <laughs> huge. This explains why it's been drying out so quickly. Um, but hopefully because the soil is quite dry, again, similar to the 
and therium in my cabinet. I'm hoping it should be quite easy to get all the soil off the roots. Oh, it's going everywhere. I might try and put it into this very full pot of used soil. And there was a question in here as well, which again might not be considered weird because it is plant related, but it was, what would make you give up plants? And I mean, I mean, I feel like that's just a weird question to answer because I currently feel like nothing. Like, I, as I've already mentioned in this video, I value my, my plant care and my plants so much. I don't feel like there's anything that would make me give up on plants, but um, as with anything, as with any hobby, I guess if it just came to the point where it was no longer enjoyable, if it was not making me happy, if it wasn't soothing me in the way that it currently does, if I wasn't enjoying it, like, I guess, I guess those would all be reasons to not do it anymore. Like, I wouldn't make myself do it if, if I felt like it wasn't what I wanted to be doing anymore, but I don't think there would be like, I, I can't imagine there being like one definitive thing that would make me go, oh, right, well, no, plants are never for me again. And I don't think I would ever completely give up, even if hypothetically there was a situation in which I had to take myself away from plant care for, I don't know, a year or so to focus on other things. I, I think it's something at this stage now that would always kind of call me back. <laughs> I don't know that I think maybe I put it on the, this list because it's just a weird question to answer do any of you have anything that you can think of off the top of your head that would make you give up on plants uh I I guess I I guess um I guess for example if Yoli was set like determined on eating all of them destroying all of them Although then I just have hanging plants. So yeah, I can't think of anything specifically that would make me give up. This is a weird question. Someone said, do you get nosebleeds? Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> I've had one nosebleed in my, in my life that I can remember. Um, I tried to backflip off a sofa to show my granny. I'd never done a backflip before. Um, and yep, I landed on my face and my nose bled. But apart from that, I don't think I've ever had a nosebleed. Uh, I feel like the person that asked this question must suffer from nosebleeds and there must be something about me that has made them ask if I get nosebleeds. I don't know, what is the quality that I have? But no, I'm not a, a, a regular nosebleeder. Um, someone's also asked, how is your mum? My mum is good and she would be really happy to know that somebody asked that as well because we were actually talking the other day. Um, she was asking like how things with YouTube were going and I was like, yeah, I was like, it's good. Um, I'm still really enjoying it. And I was talking about, because she obviously cameo <laughs> cameoed in some of my videos when I was living back at home. Um, and she was saying how much she enjoyed it. And I said to her, maybe we should do a little repot and chat video together at some point. I think she'd really enjoy it and I think I would really enjoy doing it with my mum. My mum is literally like my best friend, we can just chat for hours about nothing so I feel like she would be a fantastic person maybe to do a repot and chat with. If you would like to see that, let me know in the comments. I'll tell my mum and she'd be really happy that people want to see her. Um, also the other thing that I meant to do last summer and I never, I have to say I never got around, but I was living at home. I didn't really have any excuse, but one thing that I meant to do last summer and just didn't do and would love to do this summer is give you a tour of my mum's garden because I know I'm not living back at home now. It would mean me going back to hers, but her garden is absolutely beautiful. And she, she like, her garden is her pride and joy. She does so much to make it amazing. She's growing loads of fruits and vegetables, beautiful flowers. It's just like, I don't have like a massive outdoor space of my own, but I can really appreciate how incredible hers is. And it feels very inspiring. Like if I had an outdoor space, I think I would be heavily inspired by what she's doing in the garden. So, um, so yeah, again, if that's, I know most of you are probably here for houseplants, but if you would like to see an outdoor tour of my mum's place, maybe I could combine that with a report and chat of some sort, I don't know. But yeah, no, long and the short of it, my mum is good. <laughs> Do you like living alone? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I actually, I, I, I thought I would love living by myself, but I was also a little bit nervous, I think, before, before I actually moved in here, that I would get a bit lonely, that, I don't know, I moved to an area where I also didn't know anyone, I didn't have any close friends, so I was like, will I just be kind of completely shut off in my own space and just, I don't know, like, get freaked out or get really, yeah, lonely. Um, and actually, I, I kind of feel like it's been the best possible thing for me. I feel, yeah, I feel a lot more grown up. Like, I know that sounds like a weird thing to say. I'm almost 30, but I, I it makes me feel a little bit more grown up, more independent, I guess, is the word. Um, I love, I love being able to take time for myself and not have to work around other people in the way that I was doing before. I love it just being me and Yoli. Um, it's yeah, it's it's just been a really, a really, a really wonderful thing for me. And I, I kind of wish I'd done it sooner. That there, there have been times in my life before where I've thought about living alone and I've kind of gone, no, like I want to live with flatmates or roommates or whatever. And um and yeah, this is just it, it's been amazing. And I think as well because it has just been me living here, it's kind of it's kind of forced me to put myself out there in ways that maybe I wouldn't have done if I was living with other people. Like, it is definitely easier to, like, I don't know, go out and meet new people if you're in a group on the whole. But I've got really close with my neighbours here. Like, I consider a few of them really good friends now. And we kind of, like, chat to each other off the balcony and go for drinks with each other. And I just love that. It's kind of... It's, it's something that I don't know maybe if I'd have done as much if I had been living with other people. Um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yes is the short answer. I, I love living alone and I don't regret it at all. Um, but yeah. <laughs> uh, but also, right, these roots are crazy. I feel like they looked like a lot when I showed you them before, but now I've actually got most of the soil off they are almost like anthurium roots. Like philodendron roots are often quite thin and spindly and these ones are just so thick and chunky. And I feel like it is a plant that's gonna respond really, really well to pond. Um, I don't think there's any way I'm gonna squeeze it back into the pot that it was just in. I Was that the pot that it was just in? Yeah, it must be. I don't know how it even fit in there before. Uh, right, yeah, I need to, I need to go and get a bigger pot. I've got another one here that I was planning on maybe using, but I think that's a similar size. And it is, unless I do a little root prune on this plant as well. Although I kind of feel like it might just need to be sized up. I'm going to go look at the pot options that I've got. I mean, again, I know this isn't going to fit particularly well, but I need to create a reservoir. I don't think I mind the look of this. Like, I think it's okay. I think this is going to be, it's obviously quite a big size up, but considering the amount of roots there are, I think that's going to be perfect for this plant. And I think it's going to help it to really kind of push out lots of lovely new growth. So that's what I'm gonna go for. I'm also hoping that I've got enough pond to be able to do that with because I've only got a very little bit left and I wasn't expecting it to be this much of a dramatic size up. So let's see, let's give it a go. It's going to be a really tight squeeze. I don't know if I'm going to, I don't know if I'm going to have enough and that I don't want to do. It's going to be very close. Okay, I think this will be enough to do for the time being. It does cover all the roots. But that is me completely out of pond now, and that's how it's potted. But yeah, I do think that this plant is now going to just thrive. I think, like, I wasn't aware of how tight its root system was before, and it's already fairly fast growing, so I think this is just going to kick it into action like never before. 
But yeah, I feel like I've got through a fair amount in this video and I'm pretty happy with what I've got done. So I'm gonna end it here. I've still got lots of watering that I need to do, but again, I, I personally feel like that's not the most interesting thing to watch. If you like watching that sort of thing, again, let me know in the comments and I will happily do some like, just general kind of plant jewels watering content because it's stuff that I'm always doing anyway. If you like watching it, then that's convenient because I, I do a lot of it. Um, but yeah, if you were doing plant stuff along with this video, I really hope you managed to get lots done. I hope you're feeling a little bit more on top. Um, and if you did enjoy this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, have a lovely day, and I will see you in the next video.